Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to TCG University. It's me, Noah, here doing a set review for Fire on Opus 19 from Nightmares for Final Fantasy TCG, obviously. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and kick this one off. We're going to start with Ifrit. Uh, 3 CP Fire Forward. If Ifrit, or if a Fire Forward has entered your field this turn, the cost required to cast Ifrit is reduced by 3. Choose 1 Forward, deal it 7k damage. Uh, we're going to go, in my opinion, on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being super bad, 5 being really good. I'm going to put Ifrit... Uh, at a 4.5, maybe a 5, if Afrida, the Afrida package um, comes back. Um, almost all of these cards that we get that free cast just for you playing a forward, I think are exceptional. They're definitely going to be above average for sure. Um, Ifrit itself is a card name Ifrit, so if Afrida ever comes back into play, uh, this is, you easily run three of this card, even if it's not an EX burst, it's a free cast. It saves you cards in hand, and I think Fire's biggest issue is always being able to consistently keep cards in hand. Um, yeah, I, there's not really too much to say about this card, except for this card's super nutty. Uh, moving on to the next one, I'm going to give the full art, because it just looks cooler. We have Ace, 1 CP 9K. Um, when Ace enters the field, if you don't remove five fire cards from your break zone, or it, yeah, from your break zone from the game, put Ace into the break zone. When Ace attacks, choose one for the opponent controls and deal it 10K damage. And then he has Spirit, Spiral Gambit. I was about to say spiritual. Special, discard a copy of Ace until the end of turn. Ace gains Brave, and Ace can attack twice in the same turn. So, initially, I put Ace probably at a 3 to 4. Um, I think what makes Ace better is when you play cards like Titus along with it. So Titus will mill 5 off the top of your deck and shoot a dude. You can play Ace right after. That's 5 CP. You know, that's probably your entire turn there. Um, but if you have, like, the Goblin package going in and you can give Ace haste, you also get the ability to swing with him and shoot a dude as well. Um, him being a 1-drop is a little scary for Ixian, but a 1-drop 9k realistically, especially if you're playing him in a modifier deck, this isn't an issue. Um, or any hybrid deck, because you can easily remove 5 fire cards, I would assume. But, um... I think the, the coolest effect is that he has an on attack shoot something for 10, so he almost always gets through on damage. Um, so on initial, it'd be 3 to 4. Uh, talking through and thinking it uh, thinking it through as well, I'd probably put him at a, a 4 to 4.5. Um, maybe even a 5, honestly, in just a plain modifier deck. Next one, we have Edgar. Um, I also want to showcase the full art for that, because I want that card badly. Um, so Edgar is a, a 2 CP fire backup that says pay a fire, pay 2 of any color, Dolem. Put Edgar into the break zone as cost, and then you can choose card name Saban to cost 4 less in your break zone, play it onto the field. We will see a Saban later. And then auto crossbow, special, discard a copy, Dolem. Choose up to 3 forwards, deal them 5,000 damage. Um, I think auto crossbow is cool. I think Edgar backups are really nice. Uh, the Edgar forward kind of does eat um, the, the name slot realistically uh, it just kind of depends on how you're playing if you're focusing purely on Saban I think you play the Edgar forward um, so you can use the um, Saban oh god what opus is it I think it's the opus 17 18 Saban god I'm losing track of my numbers um, that aura cannons that one's really good uh, Edgar overall I'd probably put it about a three two and a half to three uh, without an efficient Saban, he's not really worth playing in anything. He's not generically good to have, uh, such as Ace and Ifrit. Um, his auto crossbow is cool for a 5k spread, but realistically, you could just play Afrida um, or Salamander and do the same thing without having to have an extra copy and dole it back up in the process. Uh, next one is, I uh, hope I don't pronounce this wrong, Kuki Chibuki. Probably mispronounced that. Um... This one is a, a 3 CP 6k forward that says dull, choose a forward, deal it 2k damage. If it's put from field to break zone this turn, remove it from the game instead. Um, card is a black mage. That's cool. Uh, realistically, though, I think the card's kind of meh, unless you're pairing it up with either a black mage package in like Fire Lightning, or if you pair it up with the other Cat 11 cards that we've gotten in this set. This one also has a full art. Boop. Um... Unless it's this card by itself is probably going to be a, a two. Um, this card being matched up with things like Black Mage or with the um, Chibukis that we get. 
three to four, three to three point five, realistically, in my opinion. Uh, if you disagree, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, next one is Saz, two CP, five K forward. When he enters the field, you can search for a card named Dodge, add it to your hand. So he searches for a backup guaranteed, which is super sick. Um, and the Dodge, we'll see later, supports the Saz. I just, the search is the only good thing about this card, in my opinion. I think that the backup saws EX that searches for a fire summon is just in, in way better. Outclasses this card, uh, in my opinion, by a milestone. So this card, honestly, if, if it the, the search is the only thing that boosts it, I'd still give this card maybe a 1 or 2. I wouldn't go any higher than a 2, honestly. Not even a 2.5. The search is the only good part about it. Uh, next one, we have Tifa, 5 CP, 9k. Warp 3, pay a fire, pay any color, has Brave, and says that she can attack twice in the same turn. And she's a martial artist. Uh, I wish she was a monk, but it makes sense that she's not. Um, Tifa, generically good. Um, if you're looking for deck filler, I definitely think a 2 of of Tifa is totally fine. I would put Tifa probably at a 4 to 4.5-ish range, depending on the type of deck you're playing. Uh, if you're going for things like you want to build an Archangel deck and just get that double damage in with like Tifa and Ace, uh, Tifa would definitely be like a, a 4.5 in that deck. Um, and the warp ability is really nice. It's just giving her haste. I've noticed that the biggest issue um, is always giving these cards haste so they can actually get their value out because she's a 5 cost. So things like Porum will shut her down. I've noticed that 6 cost are able to sneak through with a lot of things. But yeah, 4.5. 4, 4, 4 4.5 is where I'd put Tifa at. Dodge. Uh, Dodge, EX first when he enters the field, you may discard a card if you do, draw one, means a good cycle. And then the card name saws you control gains 1k power and first strike, meaning this boy would be a 6k with first strike. Don't like it. Uh, there is also another forward saws um, that exists as well, but like really, just the backup is just way better in my opinion. Um, Dodge is an easy 2. I think his cycle is cool. Um, I don't care about saws. Uh, existing as a forward and I think because he's an EX burst uh, it's really nice to cycle cards that like you just don't need in your hand uh, other than that yeah S stable too uh, then we have Buffasaur uh, 2 CP fire monster when a forward of your opponent enters the field you may put Buffasaur into the break zone when you do so deal it 8k damage and Buffasaur deals you appointed damage I would rather just play grenade grenade does the exact same thing Except for it doesn't do your point of damage. Now, the only time I think Buffasaur is worth playing is if you're going to play a deck that includes Cypher and uh, Yashtola. Uh, last set Cypher, so Opus 18 Cypher and the Opus 19 Yashtola that we get, which we'll end up viewing in a later video here. Um, this card becomes magnificent because that point of damage can be something that you set up uh, with like Seymour. Or it just says that another guy gains haste as well. Um, or you deal something 4k. I guess the haste doesn't matter unless they back attack you with uh, Cypher on field. But realistically, you can 12k something uh, as long as you have your stole on board. Next, sorry, uh, number score three. Next is Bomb. Uh, it is a two CP monster. If you control three or more fire backups, Bomb also becomes a forward with 5k power. And when Bomb's put from the field to the break zone, she's a forward and deal at 2k damage. Excuse me. When Bomb enters the field, you may dull two active fire backups you control. When you do so, search for a card named Bomb of cost two or less and play it onto the field. I put Bomb at a 3.5 to 4. Um, because first off, I think being able to search out a Bomb of two or less is pretty nice. Um, not all Bombs are super good, but it's nice to be able to do that. Uh, realistically, it's telling you to pay two uh, to play a dude from your deck, so it deck thins a bit more. Um, you do need three fire backups for him to actually be a forward and do anything, but if he goes to break zone, he... Anything he, he trades with is essentially 7k, um, and depending on the bombs you put out, he's pretty good. Uh, so I would put him probably at a 3.5. He's just a bit above average. Um, needs a little work around. The bomb core is cool. I don't know if you can make a deck solely relying on the bomb core. One of these days. Sabin. He also has a full art. Sabin, if you control 4 CP, 8k, my bad. Uh, monk, always nice. Um, if you control four more category six characters, the cost required to cast Sabin's reduced by two. When he enters the field, choose up to the same number of forwards the opponent controls as the category six characters put in the break zone from your field during this turn, deal them 8k damage. So he's essentially Zonde for cat six. Instead of Zonde just saying characters, Sabin requires cat six characters. Um, and he doesn't require you to break all your backups in the process. Um, 
he's good Saban fodder for Aura Cannon. I don't realistically think if you're playing a Cat 6 deck, you care about your, like, you don't want your guys to die. Um, you're probably playing around Freezing Dudes a bunch, so really removal isn't your biggest option. I'd put the Saban probably at a 2.5 to 3. He's very middling for me. Um, if anybody feels free to, feel free to change my mind on this. Um, I just don't see him being exceptional while Aura Cannon's still floating about with Edgar to let him do that for free. Uh, next one is Miu. I really like this card. Um, for CP backup, when Miu enters the field, you can search for an Ajito Cadet and add it to your hand. Job, Ajito Cadet, and add it to your hand. Super simple. Uh, it's a backup that searches backup. I'm, I'm like a sucker for those. Easy 4.5 in my opinion. Uh, the only issue that keeps it from being a perfect 5 is that unlike Norstalin, who can search for basically any color you need under FFCC, uh, Miu doesn't really get that. Miu is a bit color locked on the Ajito Cadets that you have available. I think you at least have Fire, Lightning, and Ice, but I don't think you have Earth, and I don't remember if you have a Water Ajito Cadet you can fall to as well. So she's a little bit restricted on the um, elements that you're able to match with. So yeah, 4.5. Um, monk. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy this, man. Fire, fire Earth Monks is getting boosted, and I'm gonna play that deck properly one of these days. Um, 2 CP, fire backup. Uh, job standard unit, but the card's a name Monk, which is cool. Uh, Dullet, put Monk into the break zone. Choose one attacking forward, and it gains 4k power until the end of turn. At damage 3, when Monk enters the field, choose a forward and deal with 7k damage. And it's multiplayable. Super sick. Um, I put this card base wise at probably a 2.5 but if you play it in a monk deck i think you can get it up to a 3.5 which is not a lot considering but it's above average which i think is very important um i think his ability to break himself is neat uh, it's not the best and realistically when you're playing a monk deck you really only want to stay around one damage three at max because you want yang to be effective um, so if you play around three, then this, this card's very dangerous because you can just loop it, uh, with like things like Robo, uh, three CP monk that picks up a monk and Ursula or Ursula and just keep looping this card out and seven K dudes off and then pop it for Ursula to shoot for another five K, which I think is insane. Uh, so 2.5 with nothing, 3.5 in a monk core. Lilty. Um, I played this in pre-release. No, I didn't. I almost did. I made my pre-release deck a three color. 4 CP, 8K, multiplayable, nuts. Uh, it has Brave, and when Lilty enters the field, choose a forward. If the cost to cast Lilty was paid with CP of three or more different elements, deal it 8,000 damage. Um, in pre-release, I think Lilty is definitely a 4 to 4.5 because you're probably playing at least three different elements. Outside of it, realistically, nobody's probably going to want to do that, especially with a fire card. So I would drop this down to probably a 1 to 1.5 i just don't see this card seeing a lot of play unless you're playing god what fire decks would play three elements usually fire decks only play two fire lightning fire ice uh fire wind yeah you're not really dipping into extra elements fire earth fire really just works its best when it's consistent at two elements next up is luneth 4 cp backup when left enters the field deal 5k damage all the forwards the opponent controls i'd rather play the forward warrior of light luneth um I think a free backup is nice off of the old Refia, the old light Refia, but the new Refia is way cooler. You'll see that one in the water review. Um, I just, the this one deals a 5k spread while the other one can potentially shoot something for five, six, seven, it, it, depending on how many warrior lights you have on play. I just think the forward is better because it gives things haste as well. This one, I don't really see seeing a lot of play, and especially if you're gonna play it in a mono fire deck, the other Luna still functions. Um, yeah, no, I put this card out of one of. I just don't see this card seeing any, any play um, competitively for sure. And even in casuals, I still think you just choose the other Lunath over this. Next is Ruby Weapon. We got Emerald, so we're getting to that in Wind. But Ruby Weapon is a, a 6 drop 9k that says if Ruby Weapon is dealt damage, the damage becomes 1000 instead. When Ruby blocks, dull Ruby Weapon. Uh, and then it has a special Whirlwind Sand, ditch a copy, choose a forward, remove it from the game. You can only use this ability if your opponent controls two or more forwards. So it's a good way to catch up if they're putting too many dudes on board. Uh, the fact that any amount of damage uh, basically only becomes 1k. And the fact that he's a 6 cost means he skirts around things like 
Uh, Porum, for instance. Porum does five or less, so Porum can't blank this card. Uh, Crew Chasuble can, but that card's nuts anyways. Um, the only issue is that when Ruby blocks, uh, you have to dull Ruby, meaning you only get realistically one block. Now, if you're playing in Wind, for sure, you can restand this card. If you're playing in Water, maybe. You might just be able to bounce it back, but it is a very costly card as well at 6 CP. I put this card probably at a 4. It's just above average for me, but it's costly. And if this card somehow got straight broken by like just a 7 CP Odin EX or anything like that, it just feels really bad that you put so much effort into it. This is why you play 6 CP Luso and you play this guy for free. I think that's cool. Uh, next one is uh, Laragorn. Cat 6, let's go. Uh, when Laragorn enters the field, 4CB, 6K. My bad. When Laragorn enters this field, you may search for card name Mobius or card name Curlax and play it onto the field. So he free plays uh, the other two Dream Stooges, which we will get to in the other element reviews because one is ice and one is lightning, I believe. Yes. Um, pay a fire, pay an ice, pay a lightning, dull him, and then choose a card name Mobius or Curlax in your break zone and play it onto the field. So instead of paying four, I believe the others are four as well, you instead get to pay three to replay them uh, he just keeps his guys up realistically is all he does i think in his core he's probably a good three 3.5 because i don't think the core for them is like super good maybe i can change my mind otherwise if you're not playing him in his core this card's bad it's a one of or it's a one not one of next is leon full art um i believe leon is the last one in fire so Leon's a 3 CP 5k that says if you control 4 more job rebel, Leon gains 4k power in haste, and then when Leon enters the field, you can search for a card named Maria and add it to your hand. Uh, I think that's the nuts part. I just dropped something. I don't know what it was. Uh, I think that's the nuts part about Leo, is that he's able to search for a card named Maria on play. Uh, he can search for backup Maria, he can search for the any of the four Marias that we have. Um, and then he also says if you control 4 more job rebels, he gains 4k power in haste. Um, there's not a lot of rebel backups besides, you know, the backup Maria and Joseph, the three CP EX burst that searches for a rebel. So I think those are very important to have. And then you just have another rebel on board, name a fury in, uh, and then throw Leon out. And you have a 9k with haste uh, that also searches you for an extra card. He uh, doesn't refund himself necessarily, but he does help cycle through your deck a bit more and thin it out. Um, I give Leon, God, I don't think this card's good generically, unfortunately, and the Rebel Chord just doesn't seem strong enough yet. So sadly, Leon's probably going to sit at a two. I think the card's really cool, and I think if you play it with a Rebel Chord, it's nice, but the Rebel Chord itself doesn't stand up too much. So yeah, I put Leon at a two. I wish it was better, uh, especially because this card's got a full art, and like I don't ever think I'll see this full art get played super heavily. And he's a warrior slash Rebel, which is really cool for Guy. Guy can play him as well. That's kind of cool. But yeah, um, that wraps up our fire review. Overall, I think some of the fire cards are nice. The MVPs, for sure, in my opinion, are definitely going to be uh, Ruby, Ruby Weapon, um, Ace, and Ifrit, I think, are the MVP cards on this, uh, which is funny because the thumbnail is definitely not going to show one of these cards. That's the cool, fun catch. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, James would say stay learned. I still don't have a tagline, uh, but enjoy your day.